All right, everyone, we're going to get started here and uh, appreciate you all for joining me. Thanks for uh, making the time to sit here through this today. My name is John. I know I probably worked with some of you guys and uh, others. This might be your first time hearing from me, but I'm happy to have the opportunity to go over our equipment and our products that we offer here. I'll start with a short intro on the company. For those unfamiliar, JMR has been in the traffic data industry for a good over 40 years. We're founded by James Martin, where it's where our name actually comes from, JMR. So that's a little tidbit of information. Our company's veteran owned and our equipment's made in the US. And we've specialized in traffic counters and DMIs and software for reporting and analysis uh, ever since we've been around. So we have customers all over the world who rely on the equipment daily. We've got customers in every state in the United States too that, uh, that we work with frequently. Uh, some of our common customer types, we work with cities, counties, DOT offices, police departments, engineering consulting firms, railway companies, and utility companies. Uh, I've personally been with JMAR for about five years. Before here, I worked at account consulting firm where I managed and executed traffic count projects. So I gained experience with many different types and brands of traffic counting equipment during that time. And uh, I benefited from using JMAR counters and software for years as a first-hand user. So I was always more confident when I was able to schedule a project and, and book my Trax Apollyon or Trax Flex counter over some of the options I had in the toolbox. And that's mostly because of the count verification features and the ability to adjust the count data afterwards if you needed to. A lot of times you might have a tube layout that got programmed wrong by a technician or something like that that you're able to fix after the study. It's always saved me many headaches from needing to do recounts, which is usually one of the most time consuming things and costly things when you're doing traffic counts. We'll be going over a few of our new products today and how they benefit our customers. JMR's new products include a tube counter, radar recorders, and actually now we're going to be having a camera system shortly. There's advantages to each system, depending on your application and their data needs. Some are more beneficial than others. That's one of the reasons my position at JMR actually exists here is to help assist folks getting the best solution available for their needs and their projects. For those who can find this presentation useful, I'll make it available on our YouTube channel afterwards. You can feel free to share with anyone who may want to view it. In the interest of time, we won't do a uh, Q&A session at the end, uh, but I do encourage anybody here to reach out with any feedback, suggestions, or questions especially those of you who might have some older equipment and software that you're interested in getting back up and running. I know that uh, for the equipment to be useful, you have to actually be using it. So I or another JMR rep will always be available here to assist you if you call in or email in. So let's dive into some of the specific products. All right, so our brand new tube counter here is the Trax Pinnacle. This is the newest model in our long line of Trax series. Uh, it was released at the tail end of 2021, so just last year. Uh, simply put, it's the most accurate counter we've released to date. It has the fastest processor available that we've ever you know, had available to us. And uh, with the faster processor, increases your pulse resolution and the overall accuracy of a count. JMAR has never aimed at you know, being the cheapest counter on the market, but that's because we've always added cost-saving features that we've shown and proven that they provide better long-term value. Some of the biggest costs with tube studies is the need to do recounts. Features in this counter, they help eliminate potential causes for a recount. Um, of course, these features aren't gonna stop a person cutting from cutting your tubes or a street sweeper from running it over. <laughs> That's uh, something that won't ever be stopped, but it'll help you solve some of those self-inflicted issues, bad tubes, port errors with a counter, that kind of thing. So some of the features of the new counter, there's four ports on this. I know in the past we've offered counters that were two or four port. We decided to start implementing four port in all of our counters. It gives you a little bit more flexibility in the field with tube layout. It also allows for you to be able to use backup tubes if you decided that, hey, we want to make sure that we get this count. It's really critical. You could do a regular setup and then add additional tubes. One of the features with your JMR equipment is that afterwards you could always reprocess it. There's a built in GPS receiver, and that's for GIS integration and also for location verification. 
with the GPS receiver, it'll automatically stamp your, your count files with the GPS coordinates. And that'll ensure that the count was set up at the location you ordered the count to be taken. Also with that, you can get the map and satellite images posted right onto your reports. With the GPS coordinate, the software will grab that. You're able to use a map image or a satellite image and then post that right in on your report. Makes it look a little bit nicer. It gives a little more context to the final data. Uh, the other thing, one of the most, <laughs> one of the best features that we added here was the per vehicle live view. That's something that we've wanted to have in, a, in the tube counter for a while, but this will help you verify collection accuracy before you leave the site. The pinnacles will show you, you know, your volume. They're going to show you the vehicle classification, the speed as you're watching it on the display on the counter. So you don't have to go back and process it to see that first and make sure everything looked good. It gives you a lot of verification right there on site to make sure that everything's going to be uh, done correctly. The batteries in the in the pinnacles, it's similar to our Apollyons and some of our other uh, features, but there's no maintenance required. You don't need to charge these guys. You don't need to swap out batteries about seven years. So that helps with any kind of maintenance you would imagine you might need to do with these guys. Uh, whenever you uh, whenever you have a count that you need to end up charging a battery afterwards and stuff, it just adds to downtime for the for the counter. So, you know, this gives you a little more flexibility with that. You pick it up at a site, take it right to the next one. There's bicycle counting capabilities in this counter. We, you can set it up on a dedicated bike trail or on mixed use roadways. So the counter will classify and tally bikes in addition to traffic. So if you have a uh, roadway with a dedicated bike lane and two lanes of traffic, set up one of these counters, it's gonna be able to record and classify all the vehicles and all the bicycles. There's a built-in axle hit and pulse strength tester. These are also there to help reduce your recounts and make sure you have good tubes out there. The uh, per vehicle axle timestamp pulses will be processed into volume, speed, or class data. Depend on depending on what you need for your account, but counter does give you a lot of flexibility with the software to be able to extract the data you need. These cases are lightweight, they're watertight, so you should be in good shape when you have them out there. A little easier to carry around and install. And I know we've had uh, a lot of success so far with the units we've had out there, so we started doing a two-year warranty for these. So if you guys ever need to get service for these within the first couple of years, you can always send them in. The Trax tube counters, they really are what first introduced me to JMR products and some of the quality of them. I was really able to uh, save myself a lot of money and time by being able to adjust stuff afterwards. I can't tell you the number of times I've had either myself or a tech go out, set up a tube counter with the incorrect spacing, maybe click the incorrect layout, and then because the counter is recording all the pulses, the software is what actually organizes everything afterwards. So you can fix that as long as you know how the count was set up in the field. We'll go on to our another new counters here. We do have a newer radar too that we're getting out here in the next couple of days. Uh, might be familiar with some of the radars we offer already, but I know nowadays a lot of people are moving away from tube counts, moving towards more non-intrusive intrusive methods of collection. You've got camera systems, radar systems that are designed to keep people safer, keep them out of the street, set it up faster. So JMARS had a radar option for about 15 years now, and uh, with each generation, we tried to improve on the earlier models. The uh, radars, as I said, they offer a safer and faster way to collect your traffic data. Volume, speed, and vehicle length can all be collected on uh, on any two-lane roadway. The, the radars that we offer, we test them against our other equipment that's with proven accuracy. So these guys have gotten up to about 98% accuracy when compared with our tube counters at our test sites. The other nice thing with radars is that they save you money over time. You don't have any recurring tube or accessory costs. With faster setups, you have less time for your technicians in the field in areas where it might require you to have two technicians for a traffic count. You could 
usually get away with one single technician can set them up in about five to ten minutes and there's no need to enter the roadway at any point so you don't need to get flagging teams or you know additional safety staff at all live view is used with our radars like it is with our tube counter as well but it was around a little bit longer in the radars uh, after you get these guys set up you're able to connect to it and confirm that you're getting an accurate collection and this isn't just a you know blinking status light that it did see something this is an ability to actually see the speed the length direction of travel of the vehicle so you can really be confident that you're collecting accurately before you leave the site again things that are put into the art counters that are designed to help you not have to do recounts another thing with these guys is that there's covert collection so you're usually going to have more unbiased data See, most folks don't even realize that a radar is out there. There's other similar devices, stuff like speed signs or speed trailers or e even road tubes in some cases that when people know that they're there, it actually affects the way that they drive. So you're not getting an accurate idea of what's happening on the roadway. So yeah, these won't dr influence driver's behavior, reducing speeds or increasing speeds or you know people avoiding the roadway altogether. I'm going to take a moment here to show you. This is one of our traffic engineering radars. Now we're just about to release a new version of this in uh, in a few days, so they're going to be available to be purchased and shipped out any day now. But going over a few of the the features with these, these are can they can be used to collect accurately on any two lane roadway. If you've got two lane on a highway, it's going to be able to collect for you know both lanes. If you've got a two lane residential street, it'll do just as well. It'll run for approximately eight days on a single fully charged battery, so you don't have to worry about getting a full week of data. I know that's a minimum requirement for a lot of folks, so that can usually not be an issue at all with these guys. And if you ever need to actually swap out a battery, the unit comes with two of them, so you always have one back at the office that's charged up. If you need to, you can take it out, swap out the battery, and then keep the unit going for another eight days if you need to. They're removable and rechargeable, so that's one of the keys with it. They come with a charger. You're able to have it set up at the office charging. There's a wireless setup and download process with these guys. It's done via Bluetooth. We do provide a cable that can be used as a backup just in case, but in, in most situations, the Bluetooth works just fine to be able to get it for you. We do have bundles that are available that include a field laptop and software. So that way you get everything that you need in one bundle. With a laptop, you'd end up having your your uh, radar already paired to it. Software would be installed. No reason to uh, have any issues just ready to go right out of the box. The new radar, it's going to have a built in GPS receiver, just like our Pinnacle. It's going to be able to verify location, load those images right onto your map or satellite image. And another thing with these guys is we do offer full technical support with our software and devices. So we have some video tutorials on our website, but at the end of the day, if you need someone to help you out, walk you through doing it, we'll be here to help. We have dedicated support staff, but your reps are usually pretty knowledgeable and can uh, can get you going too. So we'll go on to our next slide here. This is more of just an illustration to kind of show that we have customers all over the United States. Uh, each one of these pinpoints is a specific customer. You might see yourself on there somewhere, but I swear if you zoom in, it actually does have the location and the name, so it's a little easier to, uh, to figure out. But uh, for this, it's just to show you that we do have customers around that if you ever are interested, usually we have references in your area. So you just want to try it out or See how it's been working for somebody else, you know. You know uh, a lot of times public agencies, they're going to communicate or work with each other. So that's been one of our best marketing tools through the years is word of mouth between customers. So we have about six sales reps that cover various states and regions. If you call into JMAR, you'll be directed to your rep. who will have access to more information on local customers in your region might be able to put you in touch with a few that they uh, recommend.
next slide here. I want to go over some of the reporting features. I know we already have some videos up on the software star next, so I'm not going to spend a, a ton of time covering it in this session, but I did want to touch on some of the reporting options. For the most part, our radars and tube counters can be used for any of the reports we offer. Uh, they both work within star next, so you don't have to worry about messing with different software programs or even different procedures for generating your reports or organizing your data. There's a number of different features we added to this software that were unavailable in our previous program. So adding the map and satellite images, which I've mentioned a couple times, that's one of the things you can do in Star Next. Pulls it right from Google Maps. Applying filters to your data before processing it into reports, that's one of the big ones. I know it's been helpful in cases where uh, folks want to focus on a specific range for vehicle classes, speeds, gap. I think recently I, I worked with a customer. They wanted to look explicitly at vehicles with less than, I think it was three or four seconds of gap. And what they wanted to do was examine the speed data of platooning vehicles. So that's one of the examples. I'm sure there's many others, but what you can do when you filter through some of the data and get a look at some of the finer, more granular details. Merging count files together. This is uh, definitely another one that was asked for in Trax Pro, but wasn't available. Uh, this can be done with, in a couple cases, usually you do it with a long duration count that runs across multiple count files, or if you have two counts files that run simultaneously, like if a highway, you have two lanes northbound, two lanes southbound, you wanna combine them and look at it as one data set, you do that within the software. Another situation would be as if you had a, uh, situation where a count a tube count was set up and maybe the spacing or something was not up to i'm not quite perfect one side maybe it's set right at 24 inches the other side could be at 20 inches uh, i've been guilty of this myself i know it, it's easy to do it's easy to overlook in the field sometimes so in not too long ago that would just mean count data is no good you can't really do anything with it but within star next you can always reprocess each direction separately if you needed to. As long as you know what the what the uh, tube spacing was, you can redo it, merge the files back together as a single count file. So there's always a solution there to be able to kind of pull you out of the fire. Similar to our previous software, we do offer a great deal of customization. There's a lot of standard reports in there that, that are commonly used by engineering folks or, or police departments but they're all really customizable when you get down to it. You can go into some of the scheme editors and even the report generator in the software to design the date or design the scheme that you want to look at and how you want it organized on the report. Some of the ones we offer are the common ones, but I've had folks that are interested in looking at, you know, miles per hour by every one mile per hour increment and they want to see that broken down. So you can do that. It's Tough to get it to fit on a report, but you could do that if you'd like to. So we'll look at a few of the standard report types that can be generated. I'm going to flip through a couple slides here. These are some of our volume reports that you can grab from the software. Uh, it's the most common traffic study that you have out there, is the volume count. Uh, and these samples, they're available by default in our software. Uh, these are two common ones that folks like. I know it's a little small, but the report there on the left is a it's a week long, a seven day, 60 minute interval report. It's a good way to get an hourly volume breakdowns for an entire week. It even offers a you know, day average column, so that way you're able to uh, see if if you're only interested in the weekday data, you can kind of get a a more average look at it. The report on the right here, this is one of our 24 hour, 60 minute interval volume reports. It's a bar graph. It has the bar graph that's on the right side there. And it uh, represents total volume for each hour and a breakdown for both directions. So you'll look at the total volume, but you can also look at each direction by the hour. Moving along to our next slide here, this is the uh, speed reports that we offer. Or here are a couple of them. There's a lot more within the software, but uh, within these, 
speed is another one of the most common traffic studies that you're going to get into. The reports displayed are a few of our default options in the software. The one on the left shows speed groupings broken down by hour over a 24 hour period. I believe this one's 15 to 7 miles per hour by uh, 5 miles per hour. And then the, uh, the report on the right, this is one of those quick one page summaries that'll be able to get you some of the common data points that people look for with speed. To be able to get you your 85th percentile, throw in your total volume, your average speeds, and uh, if you are interested in doing any kind of enforcement, you're able to set that up so that you could tell if you needed to go into some more traffic calming measures on a on a residential roadway or even just a regular roadway. I'll go to our next report slide here. These are for our classification reports. These are commonly used by, uh, well, they're only available with the tube counters for doing FHWA 13 classification. Uh, they do follow a similar pattern to the speed reports and style, but they break down the 13 FHWA axle classes. Uh, it's used for a, a number of things, but it's commonly used for pavement analysis and federal funding for road maintenance, that type of stuff. Uh, so it's not always needed for your regular traffic count needs, but some folks still really rely on it. Radars, they they will collect vehicle length data, so you can create customizable length reports to fit your needs, but since there's no FHWA standard or sanctioned guideline on length classification, it can vary from agency to agency or state to state on, on what they prefer and how, how to look at length data. And I wanted to cover, this is one of the things we're excited about. This is our new camera system that we're going to be releasing here in the next couple of weeks also. So this is the OWL, and it's got a lot of different features we're ready to get going with, but I'll, I'll cover a few of them here. I'm sure many of you have benefited from using you know, video to conduct traffic studies in the past. I know it's really changed the game for performing TMCs on a large scale. I know one technician would have to be on site for hours to manually count an intersection, but when video started being used, that same single technician could set up cameras at 20 intersections in a day, recording the data simultaneously. So you get it all for the same day in case there's any other weather events, stuff going on. The data, now you have a ton of video, so you can always take it back to the office, manually process it with a sped up video. Uh, I know some folks, they'll you know send it off to trusted firms to do processing. So they, that's another option after you have video in hand. The Al specifically offers a, a wide angle, 170 degree camera view. This is so that you can capture all your movements at an intersection. It does have quite a wide angle compared to some others I've used in the past. So it, it does allow you to get to see everything, even at some of those large five point style intersection. There is a scheduler with this with this camera, so that's useful for a number of reasons, but uh, you can use to schedule multiple counts for the same location, which will preserve you some battery and and video storage. I know I used to use cameras and I would just set them to run when I went out in the field to, to film an intersection and then hopefully I got everything I needed in the 40 hours or so that it ran. But if it didn't, it would have to be redone. So this allows you to basically break up when and how you record. You do your AM, PM peak periods, record, or you could do like a record data at a location. And then if you needed to get a weekend count at that same location, you just have to do one deployment. You don't have to go out and swap anything out. You can set it to record alongside some of your other traffic counters. This can be done to you know, verify accurate collection, or you know, it could be used as a backup just in case your other equipment fails for whatever reason mid count. You do get some options here with uh, resolution qualities, and this can be advantageous for a number of reasons, but if you're doing a long duration video, using a lower quality is gonna get you a lot more battery life, a lot more video stored than using a higher def uh, image there. I can give you a good example, I know I, I performed a study at an airport where the engineering firm wanted to know 
the amount of time that vehicles would be stopped in the arrivals and departure sections of the airport over the curb. So I had to set up cameras alongside inside where, uh, where the vehicles would be stopping. And uh, that would be fine if it, that's all they wanted, but they wanted to have everything broken down by if it was a taxi, a police, you know, airport security, city bus versus an airport shuttle. So the only way to do this was to use better quality video to capture the logos on the vehicles. So that's one of the ad advantages you'd get with having a higher quality. With the camera, we're going to be introducing a mobile interface for it. So this will mean that in the field, you can use a, a phone application to program the counter. It's a little more convenient than having a laptop and you know it saves on, on what you need to bring into the field. There's a telescoping pole for ground level installation. There's no need to bring a ladder into the field to get the, the height you need for a decent camera angle. You're able to just pop it right up from the ground. As far as compatibility with our other products, it can be used with one of our TDC Ultra count boards to manually count in video, in video mode. So that way you're able to pause, speed up, or slow down the video to fit your, your schedule for counting. I know the worst part in the field about doing a manual count is needing a bathroom break in the middle of your peak hours. So it's the video mode does help a lot with that. These are available for order now, and they will be available to ship within the next few weeks. So you can always contact your JMR rep for some more specifics on when they'll be available in your area. Final slide here, just wanted to cover us on our contact information for you guys. I do encourage you to contact us with any questions, suggestions, or, or comments you have after viewing the presentation. We have staff here that are ready to help answer any questions for you. I know throughout some of the supply chain issues that have been going on, we've maintained a pretty good inventory on most of our items, and we have parts secured for production on all of our new equipment. So we should be good to go for years ahead. And uh, yeah, just please reach out with any input or if you have any features you'd be looking for in new equipment, we're always looking to get that input. That's what fuels our newer counters, designs and everything for our customers. So that's our most valuable asset is you guys and you being able to let us know what we can do to help you. And uh, I'll be posting this, this webinar to our website uh, a little bit later. So if any of you guys didn't get a chance to see it, I know there were some people in the, in the waiting room here that didn't get let in, but we'll have this up. Feel free to share it with whoever, and we will uh, be happy to help you in the future. Thank you for, uh, for joining us.